She was expecting, and she was having some dreams. And one of her dreams was that this great tree of life was uprooted. And she told her husband, the ancient chief, I've had this weird dream, that tree of life that's such an important part of our sky world. It was uprooted. Now this chief believed Oh, if you have a dream, you must, you must work to manifest that dream, to make it happen in real life. And so he and some of the other people in the sky world worked hard, worked hard, worked really hard to dislodge that great tree of life. And when they did, there was a huge hole that opened in the sky. And they were looking down and just seeing all this water below. Now, the chief's wife, being kind of pregnant, looking over the edge, started to lose her balance and she's grabbing onto the bits of the tree, but she fell <coughs> through that great hole in the sky, falling like maple wings, maple seeds pirouetting in the autumn air with her beautiful black hair flowing out behind her. She's falling and falling and falling from way up in the sky world. Now down below in the water, the creatures who live in the water are looking up, going, What's that happening up in the sky? Something's coming toward us. Hmm. And so the geese volunteer, and the geese go, we'll fly up and check out what's going on. So the geese fly up, and fly up, and fly up, and spread their wings under Sky Woman, the woman falling from the sky. And they break her fall so that she is coming down now in a gentle kind of a way on their soft, beautiful feathers. And the geese, in the geesey sort of way, honking, call down to the other creatures in the water and say, this creature, this sky woman, has no webbed feet. She cannot live well in the water. We must find something for her to stand on. 
Well, the other animals were looking around going, what are we going to do now? And they're remembering, they're starting to remember, oh yeah, underneath the water, way underneath the water, there's mud, there's land, there's something down there. Something that maybe the sky woman can stand on. And so, Duck says, hey, I'll go down. I know how to do this. So Duck goes down, but we all know ducks can't really go very far. So they dive down and come back up and no can do. The beaver says, hey, let me give it a try. And the beaver goes down and down and down. But then the air starts bursting in beaver's lungs and it's going, oh, got to go back up. The loon says, hey, us loons, we got this. We know how to go really deep. So the loon dives down, but again, doesn't get to the bottom where the mud is. And the otter tries, and some other animals try. They all are taking turns trying, and finally, the little muskrat tries. Says, I will give it my best. I will give it my all if I have to. And so, the little muskrat goes down, and 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 hits the bottom. Grabs with his little tiny paw a bit of that earth and starts coming back up. And by the time that muskrat gets to the surface, was just about spent, almost gone. And the other animals noticed that the little paw was clenched and they opened it and they said, with his last bit of strength, can you, can you do something with this? And turtle swam up, big turtle, giant turtle swims up, great old turtle, and says, put it on my back. And so the little muskrat reaches over, puts it on the turtle's back. Well, now that there was a place for Sky Woman to land, the geese gently set her down. She's standing on the turtle's back, seeing the mud, and she spreads it with her hand all over the turtle. And then she dances with gratitude because of all of the cooperation and collaboration, help from all these creatures, they had saved her from just falling into the water and drowning. Oh, she's so happy to have land and mountains spring up and valleys and plains and canyons. She creates all the land we know. And then, because she had fallen from the sky world, she still had in her hands, from that last desperate grasp at the tree of life, seeds and fruits. And she spreads them all over the land and nurtures them to life. Plants for food, plants for medicine, plants for beauty, plants for shade, plants for all purposes under the sun. And then animals started being her companions on the turtle's back because there was something there for them to eat. And because, remember, she was pregnant, she gives birth to people. And the people arrive and all begin to live on Turtle Island, Sky Woman's home. Stories provide a frame of reference to interpret my life. Sometimes they take my mind down a path of biology. How do Sky Woman's descendants avoid genetic bottlenecks? Are my mitochondria from Sky Woman? I step back and see the story as a metaphor, an invitation to reassess my place in the world and to think differently. Robin Kimmer, a citizen of the Potawatomi Nation, writes this about this story in her book. Braiding Sweetgrass. 
Robin is a professor in upstate New York and focuses her work in science and indigenous knowledge. I had the privilege of working with Robin during my master's degree, and her teaching has had a great impact on my own growth. She describes this story as part of the original, <laughs> original instructions, an invitation for two-eyed seeing, to combine the lenses of science and spirituality. What instructions does this story give me? How can it transform me? Muskrat uses every last bit of her strength and service to retrieve that little handful of soil. Soil is precious, and this soil grows to bring terrestrial life to the world. The mountains, sago lilies, the fuzzy balsam root leaves, our homes, families, our medicine and food. What a gift. Robin says that an educated person is one who knows her gifts and gives them. What are my gifts and how can I give them? What even qualifies as a gift? Does it have to be tangible? Can a gift be love or gratitude? The geese carried Sky Woman, turtle held her, Sky Woman gave life from seeds and her swollen belly. Maybe I don't need a big general answer. Maybe I can have many small gifts. As a mother, my gift is sitting on the floor and building elaborate Lego creations. <laughs> it is listening to the stories about hurt feelings at school. It is seeing the beauty of my child in the middle of a flailing meltdown and <laughs> responding with kindness. It is painting scary monsters in cars with rainbows on them. As a mother, a different kind of gift is to live as though my son's future and his relationship with the land matter. By example, making choices to reduce our family's impact. By exploring, turning over rocks to look for bugs, touching the soft leaves. By writing to my senators, marching for science and standing on the side of a sustainable future. By working in the garden and accepting in return its strawberries, purple carrots, and hummingbirds. As a botany professor at Weber State, officially I mostly share concrete scientific facts with my students. I teach them useful skills that will help them find jobs, like how to measure trees and interpret graphs. That is the easy part. Educated people know their gifts and give them. As they stand in the forest, arms grasping a diameter tape around a Douglas fir, how can I educate them in service of the original instructions? Robin describes restoration as a way of listening to the land's stories to help us restore our connection. Restoration through restoration. To help us find a sustainable place for ourselves, we need a story that includes us. We need a way to understand ourselves as part of the world. I am amazed that when I first bring my students up the discovery trail behind campus, they describe a blur of greens not differentiating among the plants. But with a little prompting, they'll begin to nibble on the miner's lettuce leaves and look for fungal hyphae in the duck. They will breathe deeply as we discuss geosmin, a chemical made by soil bacteria that boosts dopamine production. On the side of Mount Ogden, my students discover holes on trees and ask about bark beetles. They scurry up an avalanche chute and report on plant destruction and regrowth. Up in Box Elder County, my class spent a moonlit evening wondering what creature was laughing at us. In the morning light, we consulted our field guides and identified a bird, the common snipe, as the culprit. It is easy to watch my students become immersed in the land and to see the way that their hearts open and their eyes fill with light. I have discovered that they are open to the power of stories as metaphors, as a way of leading into science and as a context for the meaning of their studies. After telling Sky Woman's story in my class, I have seen my students leap into discussions about our place in the world with a new optimism. Maybe other species can teach us things. Maybe we have something to give. Maybe there is a positive way forward in our relationship with the land. This is not a story of despair. This is a story with a power for transformation. As a mother and teacher, perhaps one of my gifts is to encourage others to listen to the land's stories. 
I work to continue that practice in my own life, allowing myself to be filled with gratitude on a spring morning. I'm preparing myself to give my own small gifts in return. In the next weeks, I will be reminding myself to listen to the stories of the land and to watch for ways that I can better know and give my gifts. We invite you today to experience some of the gifts from the earth. Feel free to nibble on some miner's lettuce in little bowls and wild onions harvested here in Ogden. Savor the fragrance of our local soil. Touch something wonderful. There are balsam root leaves in there. They're very soft. We will pass these around for your pleasure, your curiosity, and your gratitude for the gifts of the earth. across all the indigenous peoples of the Great Lakes region. And so that story is one that I came to know living in western New York for most of my life. People, both the Haudenosaunee and others in that area, often refer to Turtle Island as our deep-lived reality, the foundational story of community sharing our gifts, working together for the benefit of the whole. We all live on Turtle Island. As Robin Kimmerer reminds us, this story is our original instructions. For in this story come so many lessons for how to live and how to be in right relationship with all creation. The creatures are paying attention to each other and what's happening in the world, and they're assuming the best of this new creature falling from the sky. And they want to be helpful right off the bat. They're attuned, they notice something different going on. As Sky Woman falls, she's held up by those geese, telling us, as Kimmerer tells us, that gifts of the world stand by to catch us as we are falling. And we're almost always falling in some way. These blessed geese hold her until the other animals can figure out creatively how to make a safe and appropriate space for her to land. They problem solve together they each offer their own special gifts and their willingness to try. All of the gifts are needed. All of their gifts are honored. They persevere together and they keep going until that humble little muskrat gives it his all. And the generous turtle volunteers to be the foundation Sky Woman does not come empty-handed to this world. She brings seeds and fruits, and the first people who spring from her body as she gives birth in this new place. The instructions are clear. You are to give as well as take. Reciprocity is a core understanding. The instructions remind us that we are the younger siblings of creation, the babies of the great family of things, the ones who must look to creation as our teachers. Now, I, I 
can't help but contrast the Haudenosaunee creation story with the dominant Western culture story from Genesis in the Bible. Now, you remember that one, the one about God creating the world in seven days, putting people in charge, and then punishing them when they start asking questions and want to know more, and then casting them out of the Garden of Eden forever. That story creates a chain of dominance, a hierarchy where a pouty, do it my way or else kind of God punishes people, punishes creation. Sounds kind of like bullying to me. <laughs> Where's the forgiveness here? So this is a story that while it has some very beautiful parts to it, is really rooted in fear and obedience, conflict and power over, where good and evil dualism are inscribed. And for me, that's why Sky Woman and Turtle Island speak more deeply and offer a more helpful set of instructions about how to live. It gives me a clue about how we can live well on Turtle Island. Kimmerer talks of Sky Woman as the original immigrant, arriving bearing gifts, welcomed and held in community, practicing gratitude for being there and giving back. Kimmerer says we become indigenous when we live as Sky Woman who created the world out of her gratitude and generosity, not for herself, but for future generations. Sky Woman instructs us to live as if your children's future mattered. Sky Woman teaches us to take care of the land as if our lives depend on it, because our lives and the lives of all our relations do depend on it. In return for the gift of the world, each of us needs to ask, what will I give back? Now, in terms of ecosystems, I'm an immigrant to Utah. My home ecosystem thrives in the Finger Lakes of Western New York, a land of lakes and glens and verdant hills, quite different from our mountain and desert land here in Ogden. I listen to the earth in need as I enjoy the many, many wonders of this ecosystem and also look at its unique challenges. I notice the birds, of course, because I'm a birder, and other wildlife when I visit places like the Bear River National Migratory Refuge or out to Antelope Island. I observe how these creatures thrive in those wetlands and along the lake shores. I see the lake shrinking, even though it's up just a bit right now because of our heavy snowpack melting. And then I also notice the actions of the people in Utah, wantingly watering things that don't need to be watered during the summer. You all know what I'm talking about. Using water in really sketchy ways. Also, I notice a tendency to build a lot more single-family homes, a lot more homes that need more water. I see some Utahns actively discussing actually damming up the Bear River to get more water for people, the consequence of which would be no doubt to severely affect the birds, but also people, as the largest inflow of fresh water into the lake is diminished and a toxic dust bowl is created as the lake continues to shrink. I listen to the earth in need. I also notice the fluctuation in our air quality, as I'm sure you do. 
and I wonder what I'm breathing in any given day. I want to show you some evidence, earth-based evidence, about air quality. My grandfather gifted me with this turtle rock, as they're called. This was a rock he found in the Finger Lakes when I was a teenager. As you can see, it looks kind of like a turtle. It's, it's, it's one of the most super cool rocks ever. Now he found it on a hike, and it's precious, not only because of its unusual patterns of looking like a turtle, but because it's tied to some of the local Seneca legends. And so this particular rock, this exact rock, has been precious to me for over 50 years. And I carry it with me whenever I go around the country. And I've lived in almost every region of our country at this point. It links me back to my part of the Turtle Island, where I'm from. Now, what you might not know from looking at this rock, as I'm holding it up, is that the real color of this rock is a deep, rich, gray, the color of dolomite, dolomite. Now, when I moved here, I decided to place this rock and some serpentine that I have and some other rocks out on my balcony. And as I did so, this rock has been sitting out there for almost three years now, I've noticed that my turtle rock has irrevocably changed. It has gotten a different shade of gray with some brown and orange mixed in. I'm not talking about dust that washes off. I'm talking about a fundamental change in this rock, a rock that I have had and has lived outdoors before for over 50 years. Now this may sound silly to you, but this rock is telling me something. I listen to this rock. Because if my rock has been so changed, how have my lungs changed by living here? I'm not sure, but I am listening to the earth in me. Having listened and observed, what can Sky Woman teach me about these concerns about water and air right here in our own backyard? One of the lessons is that it took all kinds of efforts and deep collaboration and cooperation to create Turtle Island. In other words, there's not just one grand solution, one grand plan to save us all, no one person who can solve this problem. It is the gifts of many, freely given, in many ways, persevering together until the muskrat finally brings up the mud. We all have a part to play. Each and every one of us has a part to play. We honor the teachings of Sky Woman when we conserve water and when we drive responsibly to minimize our air pollution. We honor her when we teach our children and others how to live more lightly on the earth and how to express our gratitude for her gifts. She appreciates it when we go beyond these acts of personal responsibility to understand that this is about systems. So we have to look at power dynamics and systemic changes needed to assure the long-term health and viability, just the plain out viability of living along this beautiful Wasatch Front. Some of us will choose to lobby. Others will march for science and climate change. Some of us will write letters to the editor or create videos that will change people's hearts and minds. Some of us will write songs and poems that teach and warn. Some of us will dance for the earth.
some of us will work in science and find data to shift policies for the good of all. But the point is, it will take all of us doing all these things every day, each in our own way, to create a sustainable, true foundation of Turtle Island here in Utah. I'm going to suggest to you a way that you can honor Sky Woman in the days to come. I, I suggest that you really stop and pay attention to the earth and what it's saying to you. Listen carefully with an open heart filled with deep, deep gratitude for the gifts. And then consider how you will share your gifts, your energy, your precious life in the service of giving back to Turtle Island in deep reciprocity with all that is. Sky Woman reminds us that we're all in this together, all a part of the interdependent web of all existence, as we Unitarian Universalists like to say. Let us become truly indigenous to this beautiful land by truly living as if our children's and grandchildren's future really mattered. May it be so.